So in this video, we'll just take a closer look at this temperature-controlled PWM fan adapter. So this specific one here does have a display that can actually tell you, of course, the temperature, but also the fan speed. And it is a little bit easier to manage or to set compared to other temperature controllers that I have already taken a look at. You can see this one here doesn't have any display, so there's like LEDs you have to go by to set the temperature. This one does actually have a display, and it doesn't really cost that much more than the other ones without a display. And this makes it much more easier to actually set up. And also the fact that this one does already have the fan cable attached to the PCB. So if you, like me, already have a fan header on your motherboard and just want to plug this adapter directly into that fan header and at the same time be able to monitor the fan's RPM through the BIOS or the software of your motherboard, this is definitely a great controller for that. This one also comes with the longer thermal probe cable. So you can see it's like around 40 centimeters in length. Like I said, already have the power cable and fan RPM cable attached to the PCB with the right plug already. And this also is a four pin connector on the other end here to connect, of course, to a PWM fan. So very simple little device. Does cost me around 3.2 US dollars. It's not really all that expensive. Link down in the description below, of course, if you are interested. And shipping was relatively fast. Took around three weeks or so to get here from AliExpress, of course. So that's pretty decent. So what you get is this little adapter here inside a anti-static bag. Let's just cut it open and have a closer look. So of course you get a little temperature controller here with the display. It does have a screen protector on there that you can of course peel off, but I'm not gonna do so right now. We have the three buttons down here to control the UI and you can also just manually ramp up or down the RPM of the fan by clicking those two buttons here and the menu button You'll have to click the right one to get into that, but of course we'll take a closer look at that in this video. So you do have the 4-pin PWM fan header. So if you have a 4-pin PWM fan like this, of course, just plug it directly in like so. And then this little controller here will, according to the temperature of the thermal probe, adjust the fan speed according to, of course, what you have set it to here inside of this software or this little display. And we do have a little plug here, of course, to plug in the thermal probe. Let's just plug it in like so, only really goes in one way. So very easy to get in there. And the little thermal probe here is relatively long. And you can see here, actually, it is pretty spot on around the 41 centimeters. And that is from the plug, you can see there, to the actual thermal probe itself, 41 centimeters. So that definitely holds up. On the back side, nothing really major here. We already have the solar cable with the right plug, so you can plug it directly into your motherboard header. Very big win for this one. One of the reasons why I actually wanted to get this one, because much easier than to solder all of these plugs and cables on yourself. So for me, it was just easier just to get this one here, instead of having to source those plugs and also having to solder it, everything in and so on. So very simple little device, three button menu system. You have a three dial display as well. Power cable already pre-attached. Of course, you have plus minus here, and you also have the fan signal header out. So the motherboard will get the RPM of the fan, which is definitely very nice. So you know the fan is running, even though the motherboard cannot control the fan. Using PWM, it can still monitor the fan's RPM in software or in BIOS and so on. And then we have that longer thermal probe here, which is definitely nice compared to like some of the other ones. For instance, this model here only comes with a very short thermal probe. So that means that the board should be very close to the point where you want to monitor the temperature which is not really ideal for my scenario here. So getting that longer thermal probe is definitely very nice. So you can have that long cable run and just hide the little adapter here away far from the object you actually want to monitor. And of course, set the fan according to that temperature. So definitely, I think this is a very nice, almost perfect little device. So let's actually try and set it up. You can see I have applied power to it. Just 12 volt going in here and I have connected a PWM fan. You can see now it's just cycling between RPM and temperature, so 26.2 degrees Celsius. And that is, of course, measured in this probe here at the end of the wire. So let me just hold it a little bit and you see the temperature go up. And you can see now it's up to around uh, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. So it definitely does register temperature, but I believe it does register a few degrees too much or too high according to the room temperature. The room temperature is just around 
22.6 degrees Celsius. So you just have to account for that, of course, whenever you set this one up into the environment you want to set it up in, you probably should just run a little few degrees hotter than what it actually is. But to set this one, very easy. You just hold the right button a few seconds, then you get into the low temperature settings, marked here with an L and 30, or 30 is 30 degrees. If you want the low temperature to start to ramp up, you can of course change the degree here. So for instance, you want it to ramp up only if it hits 50 degrees Celsius, you just set it at 50 degrees. If you want it to ramp up the fans RPM, whenever it hits like 20 degrees Celsius, you will just set it at 20 degrees. And of course you can set it all the way down to, let's just test here, five degrees Celsius is the lowest you can go. And you can also go all the way up to, let's just test here. And 94 degrees Celsius is the highest we can go and press the right button again. And then you'll get into the high setting. So the high settings is when the fan will run at a hundred percent RPM. So whenever the temperature reaches, whatever you set the high temperature at, the fan will ramp up at hundred percent RPM. Right now it's set to 99 degrees Celsius. This is the maximum you can go. But we can also, let's just test how far low we can actually go. And the lowest we can go is 10 degrees Celsius. And you probably can hear the fan has ramped up to 100% RPM. That is of course because we are now in a 22 degrees Celsius room. So if you set this to 10 degrees Celsius, then the fan will run at 100%. But for this testing, let's just set it to like 40 degrees Celsius. The low is set to 30 degrees Celsius. High is set to 40 degrees Celsius. So whenever the temperature reaches 30 degrees, the fan RPM will start to ramp up and it will reach its highest or maximum RPM at 40 degrees Celsius. You press the right button one more time, you have C and C stands for the cut down temperature. So that means whenever the temperature reaches this certain threshold, the fan should stop spinning. Let's try to set it to 25 degrees Celsius. Now it's at 25 degrees Celsius, the fan will automatically turn off. And whenever the temperature reaches above 25 degrees Celsius, the fan will just start to ramp up. And then we will, of course, hit the low threshold first at 30 degrees Celsius. And from 30 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius, it will ramp up to 100% when it reaches 40 degrees. So let's just test this. So the fan is currently off. You can see the temperature in the display is measured at 23.5 degrees Celsius. So that's actually not that far behind or that far from the actual temperature of the room. So around one degrees off. So according to this one, we are looking at around 22.9 degrees Celsius, maybe between one and two degrees off. But anyways, 24.2 degrees Celsius. Let me just hold this little thermal probe here and let the temperature rise. 30 degrees, it should start at the lowest temperature settings. You can see there, it starts to ramp up. Now it's running. And let's see if we can actually squeeze it up to the 40 degrees Celsius. Let me just use a little help here. See if we can heat this little thermal probe up to the 40 degrees. And you can hear now, the fan is running at 100% RPM. It opened at 50 degrees Celsius, so it's running 100% still. And now it's starting to ramp down. No, it's still running 100%. Let me just cool the thermal probe down a little bit. And you can see there, now it starts to ramp the fan down and quickly ramps down to the 30-ish degrees Celsius. Once it starts to hit the 25 degrees Celsius, it should also turn completely off and you can also hear the fan is much quieter now. Let's just use the fan to cool it down. See if we can hit the 25 degree mark. And hit the 25 degrees and the fan will now turn off. If you want to disable that the fan will turn off hitting a certain degree, you can of course just go into the settings here and you can just turn the C mode down to zero. And then the fan will just run at whatever speed you set it at as a minimum threshold. You can see that it's just running now. To be able to control the fan manually, you just press the right button one time. You don't hold it in, you just press one time. And then you can, of course, turn up the speed of the fan manually. And then this will be the minimum threshold of the fan. And again, when it hits the like low RPM, now it's at 50%. Whenever it hits the low temperature threshold of 30 degrees Celsius, it will start to ramp up right now here. You can see it's starting to ramp up and run faster in terms of RPM up until it hits 100% of a speed when it of course hits the 40 degrees Celsius or whatever you set it to. So actually quite a neat little system here. In my opinion, for my personal need, I just want this fan to run all the time at a low RPM. And once my system hits a certain threshold, the fan will then start to ramp up and of course cool the system efficiently. And once it goes below that degree again, 
it will just hit the lowest RPM that I've set it at right now. So this is the optimal solution for me. You can also quickly jump between te temperature and fans RPM by pressing one of the two left buttons. Doesn't really matter which button you press. So you can see the temperature there and press the button. It will show you the RPM. Of course, you're missing a zero, so it's 1310 or 20 RPM. If you just press the right button one time, you get into the fan speed mode. So of course, it is at 40% right now. You can jump it up to 50% or you can also, of course, manually just set it to 100% if you want that. Fans run at 100% all the time. And of course, it does get very loud, so you won't really do that here, but you can also just use this to set whatever fan speed you want manually and override all of the temperature settings. And whenever the fan is running, you can see the LED down there says run. Just shows you that the fan is actually running. If the fan is not running, the little LED will also turn off. Let me just set this temperature threshold to like 25 degrees, like so. You can see now the fan LED is turned off because I've set it to turn off the fan when it hits 25 degrees Celsius. In my opinion, this is the perfect little thermal fan controller very inexpensive, easy to program. You do get a nice display that you can easily read. Of course, a little bit harder to read for you because of all this lighting I have here in my studio. But actually for me, it is very readable even with all this lighting. But of course, it just gets more readable if you don't have any direct light source lighting down towards that display. One downside I would say though, is that the display seems to be always on. Would have been nice if the display would like time out after a certain period of time. Maybe after like 10 seconds or 20 seconds, the display will turn off because at some point I would suspect that this display will actually burn out. This is just a suspicion. I have no proof of that, of course, yet, but it will probably take multiple years for it to actually burn out. But once it do so, this little controller here will be pretty useless because you can really program it sufficiently without using the display. But other than that, price, performance, and also quality seems pretty good. This is definitely an easy recommend if you are looking for a solution like this. For me personally, I want to use this to monitor the temperatures of my hard drives. Unfortunately, I cannot control the motherboard's fan headers according to the hard drive temperature inside the BIOS. And I've not yet been able to find any software solution inside of the software I use to manage my drives. I use Onraid, unfortunately Gigabyte BMC fan controller for, for hard drives doesn't really work with the IPMI plug-in, at least not as of recording this video. So solution is of course to get a hardware thermal controller, have this little thermal probe close to the hard drive you wanna monitor, set the correct temperatures here for the fans to of course ramp up whenever the, the hard drive is running and doing a lot of work, the fans will ramp up and hopefully efficiently cool the hard drives and vice versa when there's no real hard drive activity, the fan will just ramp down to around 40% of its full speed just to cool out the system and the hard drives which is fine enough when there's not been written a lot of data to the hard drive so for most of the time we'll just stay in those lower rpm but of course whenever the hard drives get hotter when you're writing a lot of data or doing a parity check then the little fan controller here will ramp the fan up to the set of preferred temperatures so i think this is a perfect little fan controller and i definitely recommend it link down in the description below if you are interested but that's pretty much all i have for this video until next time, take care.